Hello there, most action RPGs like Diablo, Anthem or World of Warcraft use these and need indication on how to display how much damage a cool big new weapon deals. So if you're interested how you can do that in Game Maker Studio the simple way with fonts or the bit more challenging way with images like in good old Nintendo or Neo Geo or card games, well, I got something here for you. This is one up Indie and here I show you in this video tutorial how to make damage numbers the right way. Patreon supporters get as usual a beefed up version on what I just show you. So how is this whole thing set up? Basically uh, we have this enemy and our controller which we have here and just to go over here he has just two animations and if we hit him he goes into a sprite index change and then he will just go this through this wiggle animation and that's basically it and the other thing is our controller which I just go over very very fast so you know how this works basically we're just checking for left mouse button click and if we have a collision which we check with the collision point function on the mouse and X and mouse Y with the enemy so what we do once we hit the enemy we just create a damage number this is how it actually look, uh, looks like so what you could do here is just this is just a setup for a clicker so how, this is how for example you could do something when you want to click on, on something and some numbers pop up so this is a very very standard how you could do that so first of all we do the easy version with a font which you can set up under fonts and there you can create a new one I just take one for example this is pretty nice the Berlin Suns FBS is pretty neat to show and here you just go for a size you like if you just use it for the damage number of course and you can turn anti-lasing off and on for example if you turn it off the borders will be more sharp if not it will be a little bit blurry and more pleasing to the eye but depending on what kind of style you want to represent this is one way to do it. So let's get right into this thing. So our damage number with the font just needs a few things. First of all, an alarm to this hello alarm zero to destroy itself once a timer runs out. So we just go for 50 steps, and after we have the 50 steps, we go for instance. Come on, destroy. Let me destroy it so it won't linger around because this is every time we do um, a damage number we create a new instance of an object. So this is done, very nice. And the next thing is we want to store a variable which we call damage. This is a variable which we use in our controller. So here we go with a with instance and in this little brackets we can input some stuff we want to change in the instance itself so the damage would be I don't know for example we can go for a variable of some random random number and we go for a I random function and we go between 1 and I don't know 999 and assign it to our damage number so we just draw a random number but of course if you do um, a game you have specific numbers but this is just to show you that it works and one thing which I put in here are some different X and Y values so basically once we create the instance it goes on the mouse X and Y and I added some some range for the X and Y variables so it won't appear on the same spot but this is of course for you um, to decide what kind of thing you want to have so let's jump back into our um, damage forms and what do we need else a size maybe and we assign it to one this variable again is pretty useful for you if you go back to the controller and jump again here for example if you do regular hits maybe one is critical and the crit critical hit is of course more important so you want the font to be a little bit bigger so you can for example assign it in this creation code here because this is just controlling how the number will be in the end but this is very basic so we won't be doing a lot of stuff besides it and we are already finished with this part 
And the next thing is we want to draw our font. How do we do it? Basically, we just go for draw text and extend because I want to do some extra stuff. This is, of course, again, optional. You can go for draw text, but then it's just white and mm, doesn't look too good in my opinion. So what do we need to put in here? We want our damage number font to draw on the X and Y because if it moves, the drawing moves as well with it. We just go for here and then we need a string which we created because we want to draw our damage. And this is pretty fle flexible because this is just the text and this is pretty flexible because we just um, import it once and then it will draw the number it uses. So this is very nice and easy to set up. The next thing we need is a separation, um, I don't know, 5, I don't really care because this will be always a line with let's say 500, so we are sure. And here I actually want to do not draw extend, but draw extend color. I just want it to be a little bit uh, more nuanced. So we go for the string, separation, width, scale. Here we go for our size. So we can, for example, draw it a little bit bigger and smaller because this is how you would manipulate it with the X and Y scale. Angle of zero because we don't want to change anything. And here I put on, put in my custom colors which I already set up beforehand. And these are just like some darker orange ones and some lighter orange ones. And then in the end you will see how this looks like. Alpha we can leave for one. If we start it, you will see that it already works. It doesn't look too good because it's a little bit hard to distinguish from the background. So how can we remedy that? With a very simple trick, by adding some sort of a fake shadow. So how do we do that? We just copy the whole line again and put X and Y plus one. And this is just basically our shadow we want to draw. So here we go, C black. So what, what are we doing here? We just are drawing one time the whole damage number with a black color and then over it with a little bit to the le top left um, our damage number with the orange color. And now it should already look better. And as you can see this is already better. You can see some stuff. And this is for example how a clicker would work. Like. And if you want for example to put in some movement for example you just go X y and minus let's say minus 0.2 then it would move up this is how you set up the first and the easy font to do now we go for the other one which is a little bit more difficult so we can already check this one and here um, we cannot just draw something because we don't have a text we have sprites for example we use these kind of sprites and we have to dissect the number into its parts for example its tenth its uh, one hundredth and so on so on part and for that we need the digits so for example if we have a number of i don't know 123 we just we need the one the two and the three and we just draw one after the other so how can we do that you can just copy a few things which we already created here for example the alarm the damage and the size this stays the same, there is no problem here. We just copy paste that stuff in here. And now we need to establish something which are the digits. Come on, come on, where are you? So we need to have two things. First of all, our digits, because we want, um, for example, the last digit, then the before, and so on and so on. And that's why we need those separately. The next thing we need is damage length. And that thing is quite important as well because we want to check with the string length num um, with the string length function how long our string is. So basically if we draw we for example just want to draw if the number is just consisting of two digits and we just want to draw two digits that we get with our length 
which we just grab here. So how do we define those digits we, which we want to get? First of all, we take the first one and then we need to divide it by 10,000. So we just go take our damage and do div, which is just a division and 10,000. And what that does, it will basically divide it by 10,000 and just leave the rest. But because we don't want to have like a, a real number, for example, 9.567 or whatever, we want just the this spot. So we go for a round. And now it will cut the, the number which is coming out and then we just get this position. And the same we do with the other parts, but, but a little bit different. For example, if we would do it like this, we would get two numbers and that is something we don't want. And that's why we need to take something away. So for example, we have our, our first number and we multiply it by 10,000 and divide it. So we just take out the first thing out of the equation from the total number. And then we divide it by 1000. As you can see, this is this has a hierarchy, so we can do it like this. I just copy pasted it. It's basically just 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 the same code. It's like dividing here and dividing that again and with that and with that. And this is how the code then in the end looks like and we got all our digits set up. So the next thing is we want to draw our sprite. This is how we do it. We go for draw sprite extent and we want to draw our, we take our orange line because this looks actually pretty nice. We go like this and then we need our index and the indexes we already have established and these are these ones. So we have our sub image, so the image we are drawing, the sub image we need, and the x and the y and the x scale, which is our size. So we can reuse it. Come on, go away. Um, here we go, here we go. Rotational color. Now the color, we don't want to do any blending, so we just go for C white, so it stays the same. There is no change here. This is how we do with all the other ones. So we go for ones smaller. Come on. Jesus, auto correction. And, and the last one, which is this. And of course, we don't want them to draw on the same spot. And that's why we go here for 14. Because the image width of our image is 12, so let's go for, let's say, a 14 value, and here plus 28, and here plus 32, 42. Okay, and we are done here. But this is just drawing if we have a digit of 4. And that's why we have this dam damage number length. But now I will show you something, and now we click on that, but it says 0, 0 0.1, 0, 0 0.1, and you think, why is that number 0, 0 0.1? That doesn't sound right. So we go back to our controller, and actually it should be having a random number between 1 and 9,999. So what is happening here? Um, well, the good part is, for example, if you're using the damage number with the font, the font, the, the, the damage is getting updated all the time and that's why uh, you already have after the first step not one initialized damage but the number which is random and here we don't have that that's why we need to put all that stuff into a step event and because we don't want to do it every step event because that's just wasting resources we take um, a user variable which I call check once again and say it's false. This is just basically like a switch. So we go into our step event and go for if once again is false. 
then we want to do the whole checking again and just do it once and then do it to true so we need our calculation which we're having here so we get our digits just delete that because it's useless in this position and then the next thing is we want to have our length as well because now it has just a length of one because it's just checking for the one and says all right we're done here and this is of course wrong and now we can just take the length and say if our length is equal to four we draw four numbers if for example the number is two numbers well then we just draw two so for example if there would be just two then we kill those here Let's say zero and here 40 and analog all the other ones I just prepared to prepare them in advance so we don't have to do anything so basically just saying here first digit second third and so on and here first second and so on and once we hit start it should work as you can see it works pretty nicely so this is how you would do it have a good one one up indie